Hello and welcome to the DSO Imager channel. My name is James and tonight I'm going to show uh, an image I took recently with my Celestron Edge uh, HD8 and uh, my ZWO ASI 294 Mono. This is a picture of IC1871. It is the uh, star forming clouds in the center of the Sol Nebula and uh, that small region frames up pretty well with uh, my edge. Now let me first uh, just show you uh, how many um, uh, subs on each. So yeah, here's the uh, sub count. I've got a total of 30 hours, give or take a little bit. You can see it's very heavy on HA and S2 and uh, this is like so many of my recent uh, Hubble palette images where our clear nights keep lining up with uh, with uh, full moon sequences so I don't have a lot of 03 in there and um, you know we're right now as I'm recording this in the middle of another full moon sequence so I don't know if I'm gonna go back and get more 03 for this one or not um, but you guys can take a look at the final result and let me know if you think uh, I need to get more all right, so let's go ahead and um, take a look at the uh, stacked images. So here's our S2. All right, and like I said, this was all taken with a really bright moon. Uh, it's a little grainy, but we have some good detail in there. And here's the O3, very little O3 in there. Or I should say very little uh, integration time. Uh, the noise actually doesn't look too terrible uh, given uh, how, how little data I got. And there's our HA. HA is really clean, as usual. Okay. So what I did is I just went ahead and used the LRGB combination tool and put the three in there. And this is just auto stretch with uh, channels unlocked. And if I lock them, that's what we get. So unlocked. And I mean, there's a lot of detail here. And there's not a lot of noise in here either. I mean, there's some grain, but uh, with uh, high integration time, the noise is not bad at all. Now, one thing that's a little bit different with this image uh, compared to how I typically process, I did not use uh, background dynamic extraction. I didn't use BDE, BDE or ABE. Um, so I mean it's that tool is I usually run it on most of my images but it's really its intended purpose is to take care of gradients and even though I was getting much of this with the uh, with a full moon out there's not really much of a gradient in here and uh, I did try running dynamic background extraction on there and I just didn't like the results basically what ends up what ends up happening is that these areas just get too dark and too grainy and I mean, uh, on an image like this, with, with especially at long focal length, where it's all nebulosity, the whole thing is nebulosity, there really technically isn't any background uh, anyway. So uh, I went ahead and processed this without doing, uh, with skipping that step. So after I combined them, I went ahead and pulled the luminance so I can run my deconvolution. And you can see it here. get a good spot for it okay so this is before deconvolution uh, especially on these YouTube videos it's going to be mostly noticeable if you look at these large stars uh, but if you look, look closely this this area will be more defined and this detail in here will look look better so there it is that's with deconvolution all right without the, the light being emitted from here is just kind of blurred off but you can actually 
almost make out rays coming out there. Off, uh, without, with. Okay, and so after we do that, we have our combined color image here. And so you blur it out. So you stretch, right? You apply a stretch, then you blur it. And this reduces color noise. And uh, then you apply the luminance. So without the luminance, with the luminance. Not a huge difference. It's noticeable if you uh, pixel peep a little bit. And after that, we go ahead and remove the stars. Now, for star removal, I used, instead of star net, I used uh, star exterminator. So, if you might have seen uh, the video that I had posted a couple weeks ago uh, on this, it was came out as a um, as a Photoshop plugin. Well, now it's available uh, for Pixinsight, and so for users that do 99% of their work in Pixinsight, like myself, this was. Uh, very handy and you can see it does a phenomenal job I mean this is this is pretty impressive this is with no work at it at all just just stretched just that pre-processing and it just looks amazingly clean all right so let's take a look at uh, what I did I mean there, this this actually I processed it very quickly it did not take a lot of effort uh, to work on this. I'll just show real quick some of the masks that I use so you can get an idea of what parts I've isolated. And what am I doing with these masks? So it's mostly uh, to isolate different areas so I can work on curves without making certain parts too bright or too dark. Uh, I think this one here I might have used when I um, Applied an unsharp mask. So anyway, we'll just step through it really quick. Get these out of the way. So this is right after running StarNet. A little work on curves, more work on curves. What I'm trying to do is differentiate these dark areas from the bright areas. There's an invert. I should be taking care of the magenta here. Yep. Looks like I got rid of some green there. Now you guys, uh, you guys that have been following me, following me, you know I like my green. Uh, so you can see that. I mean, I didn't, I didn't take all of it out. I think I took like 60% out of whatever. So you don't see much in there now. But when you start working. Uh, uh, saturation you'll see some of it come back in fact I'm pretty sure I had to remove green an additional time uh, this is where I convert some of this some of this yellow into uh, into kind of a reddish tone more uh, more um, saturation so now we can see some greens come making their way back Doing a preview here, probably, so I can uh, see how Unsharp Mask works, or maybe I was uh, running some curves. Yeah. And this is all curves work. I mean, you can see. All right, right. There's a mask applied. What's that mask look like? There it is. So I was a little concerned. This area got really dark. And so I masked everything off to try and uh, pull that out a little bit. Here you can see the mask being used. Okay, and I think I ended up here. All right, and to give myself a clean workspace, I sometimes for the final bit of processing, I'll move over to another work workspace here. So uh, let's take a look at the stars real quick, right? So this is what they look like initially. And 
and here they are. Let's step through these really quick. I didn't do a whole lot. I mean, so I ran the little script, correct magenta stars, right, which inverts and subtracts green. And then I subtract green again, and then I pull back on curves to de-emphasize a little bit, and that was it. And then it's just a matter of adding. I, I rename that one so it's just easier to find in pixel math. Here's a finished image. So now I tend to pixel peep and I really shouldn't do that. I mean the image looks great from from here in my my opinion but then I get in and I see a little bit of green. Now notice I had not mentioned anything about noise reduction so up to this point there was no noise reduction. Well I guess technically uh, when I ran deconvolution right I did have this unchecked and so, all right, there was a little bit of noise reduction with deconvolution, and, and these are my deconvolution settings, by the way, uh, that I used on this image. But other than that, there was no, no uh, noise reduction. And I was gonna leave it like this, but eh, I want to smooth it out. So I ended up running the, um, the uh, easy denoise. Now, ideally you'd run this against um, uh, linear images are still in linear state and if if maybe I had a chance to do this over again maybe I would have ran denoise against the O3 and the S2 but anyway so I ran it against this and here's how it came out so I mean if you look at the image really the way you're supposed to I mean you can't even tell any difference between the two but if you zoom in that's a little less noisy All right. I mean, can you really tell a difference? Uh, it's subtle. But anyway, so this is what I got. There is actually a decent chance that I will add more time to this, depending on how the rest of the week looks. Uh, we might have a couple of clear nights in the middle of the week uh, with that moon out again. So I'm kind of hesitant to start a new target. And I may just pile on some more data on here. Of course, I won't be able to get any O3 uh, until the moon goes away. But anyway, I'd love to hear what you guys think. Um, if this is, uh, uh, if you prefer it with the noise reduction or without, uh, any comments on the colors, uh, would you guys do something different? Uh, maybe de-emphasize the stars more. Uh, love to hear you guys' thoughts on this. Uh, oh yeah, and one last thing, the community option on my YouTube channel has been enabled, uh, even though I haven't hit a thousand subs yet. So uh, keep an eye open on that. Uh, definitely, uh, if you haven't subscribed and uh, hit the little reminder thing, I will uh, try to get some discussion going on there. Um, you know, like everyone, I like talking about equipment and planning future purchases and stuff like that. So maybe we can get equipment discussion. I can make some posts maybe with some open-ended processing uh, questions. That way anyone that's got a question about how to do something or whatever can drop it in there and maybe we, we can get a discussion going. Uh, so anyway, uh, have a good night. Clear skies.